to do this. Hi, this is the no intro uh, version of Let's See If You Can Hear Get Me show. <laughs> you could hear Kevin. Okay, we're not formal here. I'm just going to wait till someone chimes in and says they can hear me. And let me copy that statement there. They said, I believe last time, Kevin, they could hear you, but I'm just going to see that they can hear me as well. Okay. So, this should be... And again, it's not me, right? It's I'm... not you, Kevin. It's not you. I'll, I'll, I'll sit here and shut up so you can... <laughs> no, it's okay. Stuff. I think this should work, but we'll just wait for people because they have to kind of refresh their browser to um, see us on the new. Oh, board. I follow you. Yeah. Someday this technology will work a lot easier. easier. I, I, I compliment you and I Thanks. praise you for like for wanting to learn it. Like I'm a I'll work, I'll work through. <laughs> oh, there you go. See the things we don't know about Natal Natalie McClain. And that you can learn when she doesn't think the camera's on. That's the most revealing, right? When you don't think you're being the, recorded all the time. The juice camera's on. always on. <laughs> the camera's always on. That's true. That's what they say. They, that's right. what they say. Okay. So have you got your wines close by as we wait to see? I, if I have. I have one. Yes, I don't. Um, so we're we're, we're going to work through this together and yeah. fine. <laughs> but I'm 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 playing some quiz with you today too. This is what I, I do. You think you're going to turn the tables, do you? No, no. We're going to work through it together. We're going <laughs> to skip and hold hands. Always the host. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Little crush. Little crush. You get a little crush. <laughs> That's great. Uh, well, as we're waiting, I still, and just in case anybody can hear and see this, I'll put us on a two shot. And hey, Natalie. Okay, Gwen. <laughs> Besides, hey, uh, can you tell me? Can you hear us? Okay, I'm going to put us on a two shot. And just. See if that goes. Uh, oh, yup. She said, yup. Okay. Gwen. Hi. Who's hey. That? Okay. That's Gwen in Ottawa. Gwen. She's a regular. You say no. See? There. You didn't do too well this weekend. Hi, Gwen. <laughs> Gwen. And can you hear Kevin, Gwen? Can you hear Gwen? <laughs> yup. I think I got another yup. Anyway, I'm going to um, keep going. Okay, Kevin, yeah. it's like we just started. All right. Yep. So I'm going to, even though you're you're here already and we've been, hey, Kevin, okay, perfectly. Oh, okay, yay, wow. You'll regret it, you'll regret it in 40 minutes. <laughs> all of a sudden I'll just go, I don't know what's happening, Kevin. I I, I, it's awful. <laughs> <laughs> you're breaking up. Okay, I am going to introduce you because you didn't hear that before. Okay, excellent. You don't have to do that. I want to. I want okay. them to know. Okay, it's your show. You do Thank what you, you want. Okay, <laughs> shh, for now. <laughs> Kevin, who joins me here, he is so lively. As you can see, I can barely contain him, and it's going to be a great show. You're here, finally, on the Sunday Sipper Club, where we gather every Sunday at 6 p.m. to talk to the most intriguing people in the wine world. Kevin Brosh was the host of the Thirsty Traveler uh, with the Food Network. So yes or no, did you ever see that show? The other one that, <laughs> you got so many reactions there. The other one that he co-hosted was the Iron Chef TV series. So Kevin has a wide um, expanse of experience in radio, broadcast. He was also on the Discovery Channel, on TVO Kids. Lots and lots of stuff. And he's traveled the wine world. So tonight you're going to learn about his adventures through the wine world. And maybe you want to plan your next wine trip based on where he's been. Welcome, Kevin. Hello. Oh, excellent. <laughs> All right. So glad to hear and see you, Kevin. Thank you for your patience. And thank you, everybody out there who has been patient. All right. Oh, you're already getting into the stuff. You've got I, Sedura. I, I, I do. I do. Right there. Look you at suggested... That some wines and yep. one of them was a well-priced cava so i picked up fresh net okay oh yeah i was i looked at that you know and yep. was, i love you know my my experience with sparkling really came from the french region um from from france from epernay and, and, and Reims, champagne yeah champagne yes. and i i found that when you're in champagne you drink champagne but sure. when you're not um there's a lot of more fruit forward less yeasty less bready yeah. styles of sparkling wine mm -hmm. um california being a bit more pricey yes. uh, ontario being amazingly well made but mm -hmm. pricey as well mm -hmm. prosecco 
you know, I'm not going to check the no box, but Spanish Cava, I believe, is is my wheelhouse. Right. And and I love this for um, when you get a bill from the tax collector. Right. Um, <laughs> it's well priced. When yes. Taxes you can are due, it. Mm-hmm. and you need to celebrate anything like it. It's like two p.m. I need to try something here. Can I? I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna. Okay. Oh, gonna he's gonna saber. Are you gonna yes. saber? Yes. Oh, well, I'm live saber. demo. This is okay. action. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Okay. You're so going the up the scene. Thumb, the thumb is in the punt. Right. The uh, we're gonna skip the story of we're gonna skip the story of Napoleon. <laughs> the bottle is well chilled. We're gonna dip it down. Yeah. Oh, dip it down. Okay. Trick. You don't look for the seam, and then we're gonna ride the heft of the knife that we're using. We're using a global knife, global. Okay. A potential sponsor for Natalie's show, <laughs> and we're gonna just rub it right like a baby, like a. Okay. Oh. Boom. And we did it just like that. Way to start everybody's the show. Worried, everybody's worried about the glass. Yes. Right? Yes. It all moves forward. Nothing goes back in. Oh, right. For the force. Right. So you're not drinking Chardonnay. Oh, oh points for now. Give me points. No. Give me points. I, I, you Give know what? Points. If you encourage me, I'll just keep punning all night. Let me, let me, well, what, what's wrong with that? Hang on a second. Let Where'd me show it go? you. go? <laughs> let me show you very quickly. Okay. Oh, isn't that a nice clean cut? I can't hear you. I'm putting my buds okay. back in. Nice clean cut. Uh, f- fairly, I can do better, but it, that's not bad, right? Yeah. People think they're trying to hit the cork out of the bottle, and actually, what you're doing is you're going for the the lip of the glass. Right. The weakest right? point, right? Like it's like a street fight. Oh. Like it, it, remember the last time you were in a street fight, Natalie? Uh, no. Yeah, but go ahead. <laughs> uh, so you're going for the 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 ankles, the knees. Oh. Or the or the. Okay. The, yeah. Those gotcha. things. Yeah. Right. Because those are all vulnerability. Weakest, yes. Yes. Exactly. And the point of vul- vulnerability on a bottle of sparkling wine or champagne is actually right there. So you can see right. where I hit it. Yeah. A lot of people worry about the 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 seam of the bottle and how the bottle is created. Okay. But if the bottle is cold enough and you hit it well placed with a, a, a heavy set, you'll always be able to get it out. It's a bit of a parlor trick. Yeah. You know, it's don't aim it at anybody. No. But this is how I'm going to start my version of the show. Now, that is I'm so gonna, great. I'm going to throw you a question. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm 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 um, I'm German, right? I'm without the glassware. <laughs> I'm without glassware. So I have two glasses here. So in a situation, and it's summer, right? Come on, okay. like, I'm yeah. I'm wearing shorts. I got no shoes on. Throw an it's ice like, cube in it. Throw an ice cube in it. But what glass would you want me to use for this today? I have. I this have to old... choose between those two. Yes. Well, if we're in the backyard, I really don't care. Okay, but so I'm, I'm just going. Yeah, go ahead. Um, like I'm that looks use... like it might break the crystal one. It looks uh, too know, fancy. It's always... Okay, so I'll just use the blue. Okay. Well, we can't see it, but whatever. It's sparkling. Well, that's why I wanted to use the crystal, so you know that I'm drinking for reals. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. So oh. not not the proper glassware. So don't shun me for this. No. But you actually you. get more in the glass. I'm going to pour it right in France. This is what they do. Is it really in champagne? They do, oh, it, in a in a flute. Yes. Right to the top. Right to the top. Yeah, it's that's still a the, small glass, though. It's a smaller glass, but yeah. come on, it's Sunday <laughs> and we're on live Facebook and Google. Yeah, and it's it's and, cocktail hour for sure. So what are you drinking? I am drinking the Fresh Net. I only recently learned how to pronounce that. I used to say Freaks Net, like it was some sort of hairspray. Yeah. But, and some um, people say Frisne, but we all know which one it is. They like Fresh it's, Net, apparently. I've been corrected yes, by no, the people. Yes, by the people. Uh, Can you show the bottle? Can yeah, you show the bottle? I, I am Are holding you, it up. Um, you can't see where I'm oh. holding it up to this camera, but it's right in front and center. <laughs> is, it the, is it the Reserve? Or the Reserva? I'll show you. Oh, there we go. Thank yeah. you. I love you. There. I love you. All right. It's a great, you know what? This is 13 bucks. You're right on the value equation and it's dry yeah. it's earthy it's not sweet fruity it's dry and that's the thing i really like about spanish cava i mean it, 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 it there is a balance between what they do in france with champagne and what they do in california with sparkling wine california is very fruit forward okay right like moet and chandon sure. um uh but i find this a really great balance and because i often um 
dip between the worlds of beer and wine and cocktail. And I really like to incorporate sparkling wine in my cocktails whenever I can. Mm. I find that this is a better balance. It brings a bit more of the subtlety of sweetness and fruit and flavor of, of the grape versus the bready and yeastiness of French champagne. So, so this is what I do. That's fantastic. And, yeah. You know, and if you have a different opinion, and Gwen in Ottawa, you know, then <laughs> Gwen in Ottawa, also Dude. Paul in Virginia, Stephen in Waterloo, Anne in Halifax. They're they're walking in the door. These are the folks who are actually commenting. Nice. We have lots of lurkers too who like to just drink and watch us. <laughs> really? Oh yeah, yeah. Really? It's, it's a lot of fun for sure. We're not alone here. Cool. Um, Let's see what they're saying. I'll just glance over this way to read the Facebook comments. Uh, Paul says he's opened bottles like that before himself using the sabering technique. Have you always been successful? Yeah, Paul, has it always worked or ha have there been incidents that you'd like to share with us? Uh, Stephen says he's drinking the Angel's Gate Pinot Noir, Heavenly Pinot. Nice. Nice. Sharon is joining us from Ottawa. She's drinking Clean Slate Riesling. Angie Howe says hi from Newfoundland. Daniel Oak is here from somewhere near Toronto. Um, all right. So you had a sabering incident somewhere. I think you mentioned before somewhere yeah. in our correspondences. What was happening there? Oh, it, it was probably one of the, the when we, we, we just started the show, it was just after 2001. And we, we were lined up to go to, um, to uh, Epernay to okay. do a, our, our second or third show of the Thursday Traveler. Okay. And um, they kind of said, why don't we just call it off? You know, and they said, nobody's going to drink champagne for a long time. The buildings have just collapsed. People are going to move. And, and this is how the advertising and marketing people look at it. They were like, the world is going to give up on champagne for five years. They're going to drink brown spirits, like drinks to, you know, Drown dismal pain, drinks to whenever. just drown the pain yeah. but nobody's going to celebrate sure. anymore and we were like no we still want to come 2001 was not a great harvest in um in france especially for uh champagne grapes okay but they let us they let us come and we went to pomery okay. um we were well we were well treated and i was offered um the i was offered the task of learning the art of sabrage which i just performed and my instruction was given to me in France. And it was a very hot afternoon. Uh, the, 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 bricks on the, the bricks on the sugar levels, the grapes were going up. Um, so they were leaving them hang for a couple of extra days just to pump all that sugar out of the grapes so they could get you know, good yields. And they used gypsy pickers. So at lunch, we stopped. Gypsy used, pickers, meaning? Uh, grape pickers. Go? Yeah, they go from they go from vineyard to vineyard, mostly Hungarians. Okay, and traveling. They're, they're sort of homeless, you know. They're sort of like Johnny Depp in one of those movies. You Johnny know. Depp. Yeah, Johnny Depp. Was he a grape picker in one of those movies? I, I, I don't. Think I'm being too that. literal. I, I'm just trying to paint a scene. That would be Kino Reeves. Anyway, go ahead. Oh, okay, there you go. So. They were behind fences and they were all sitting there at lunch watching us and they were shaking the fences going, go, 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 go. And I was standing there and there was this gentleman, a lovely gentleman who I think was the master sommelier at the Pommery Estates okay. in, uh, in, in Reims, in Rounds. You can say it either way. And he said, c'est définitive mais non trop pas fort. And I was just like, go, 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 go. <laughs> so I didn't understand what he said. He said, Hit it definitively, right. but with not too much force. Ah, so precisely. in my later years, I learned that it means don't Joe Carter it like a whole lot <laughs> of days. Yep. It's you just want to like, boom, like, but you want to pull back. You don't want to follow through. You want to spank it, like spank it like a spank it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Whatever you want to spank. You so said we can take that. It's anywhere. still family hour. <laughs> it's a Sunday. It's a Sunday. So, but you sort of want to pull it back. And I okay. didn't do that. And I lost a magnum of <gasps> um, fantastic wine into the grass. And then he went and got another one and just came out with the saber and just popped it one time. And I, I don't mind being embarrassed, but it was a great life lesson. And yeah. now we, I incorporate it as part of my speaking tours, my programs, and I teach people. And it's one of the greatest joys and pleasures that I can bring to people. When I stand behind them, I get them loosened up because you all get tight and you just want to hit it. And it's like <laughs> golf hips. 
golf hips, golf oh, hips. Loose. And you just breathe and just puff and it goes off just like butter. Awesome. Wow. Okay. So, so that, that was how I, that was how I started. <laughs> That's a great so, intro lesson. And before she falls off here, Nicole Lockheed is logging in from Vancouver. Whoops, she disappeared. I can only see five comments at once. So just okay. going to acknowledge these people. But um, Hey, and, Nicole. <laughs> and uh, Danielle saying, don't saber a small bottle. And she's also asking, do you remember a time when Travis, her husband, sab sabered that small bottle while doing a video with, yes, I do remember that, that, yes. <laughs> when, when, he, when you he, say small bottle, is like a, like a, like a really small bottle? I think it was a half bottle. And really? uh, she says they're still getting champagne out, I guess, the shards off the living room floor. <laughs> okay, well, all right. I'm sorry. Okay. I've, never, I've, never, I've never done a, a, a half a size. A small half bottle, yeah. yeah it must, no, I bet you it's, it's physics or something. Needs I think, that well, there, I think there's definitely something to that, right? Yeah, yeah, I got to believe. Yeah. Uh, not a split. Okay, a half. Okay. Anyway, uh, Gwen says, we uber chill the neck before sabering. Heard that helps to ensure success. There's probably something to that also when they disgorge. You know, they really chill the, they turn the bottle upside down and really chill yeah. the neck of the bottle. Anyway, it all fits together. So um, have you also been to the heart of Cava land, Kevin? Uh, it's through Spain? Yeah, like where yeah. they produce Cava. Yeah. Yeah. Do you I have mean, I... We never did a, We never produced a show there, but I've been okay. there on, on some uh, on some tours. Okay. Um, I, I mean, it, it's it's the same everywhere, and it's different everywhere, right? You see the heart and the passion. Our show is really less, in, in my experiences, are far less technical. Yes. I you know I can play the technical game a bit. You know, sometimes you get in a room and there's like five guys, and it's like Fight Club. You know, or or five women or five sommeliers and and it's like Fight Club and it's like yeah, you want to go technical? Let's go technical. Let's go passion. Let's go heart. Let's go flavors. You know, and at the end of the day, um, but you know, this is what suits me when it comes to sparkling wine. Sure, uh, I would I would love to drink champagne every day, mm. but, and if I had the money, and I don't, but if I did, I still wouldn't. Right. It's what the flavors of the wine of the varietal, of the family producer bring to me that leads me to what I want to drink, what Absolutely. I wish to drink. It's a great um, value equation. It really yeah. is. And, yeah. And so this is like summer and especially summer fun time drinking. You know, I, I feel like I'm a kid off school. You know, <laughs> it's either recess or it's summer vacation. I know that winter is coming uh, and I'll be watching that tonight. Yeah, but, that's um, right. At least we don't interfere with that. We just yeah, warm no. people up for Game well, of Thrones. If you, if you want to keep, if you want to keep going, we can keep going. We can, <laughs> yeah. we, can we can watch Game of Thrones together. I'll just well, again turn. I like the it interesting, yeah. <laughs> um, but but it's it's like yeah, I'll I'll drink, I will I'll drink a PBR. Like I don't care. I'll drink PBR. You know, a vodka wait a minute. Soda. I'm trying to decipher a PBR. Perhaps Blue Ribbon. Oh, is that beer? Sorry, that's a beer. I'm bringing a beer. Like it, it, in the summer, you wear shorts. You don't shave. I mean, I shaved <laughs> for you. I got my hair oh, cut. Thank you. I got that's my hair nice. did. I got wow. my hair did. Our hair did. Um, <laughs> but but really, you know, this is the time of year to just maybe explore a bit or or care less and and not hold up your highest britches and just true. you know what are you drinking oh my yeah. god that's just insane well that's true and you know we're not at uh white uh white tablecloth settings whether it's at home no. or restaurants we are likely to be in the backyard so as they say put yeah. an ice cube in it and uh experiment yeah. relax and i and i can do white tablecloth but yeah. it's just it's harder in the august heat sure you know? absolutely you need to chill literally chill nicole yeah. says great sabering tips kevin and kava is great danielle we drink a and, lot of it and keep these because they uh -huh. are great souvenirs what do you They're do very with sharp Okay. I, I, I keep them on a shelf. I don't know if I sent you a picture. Um, oh. I, have a, I, I don't think the picture was high resolution enough, but I keep them on a shelf and I glue them to a shelf. <laughs> I have a hundred, 10 by 10 by 10 by 10, and they're all date stamped. Um, I don't do it every time anymore, but when you reach back into the fridge yes. for the second glass, you have to be very careful because oh. there's five stitches right there. Oh, I, no. <laughs> oh. Of when I went in off my my second or third, you know, successfully savored bottle. Oh. And it, 
all an You've got a wine injury. Man down, man down. This guy needs some wine. It's kind of a first world problem. Not to not empathize with you, but it's like my jacuzzi cover hit my head and now I have a little slight concussion. It's a bourgeois stress thing. Okay, anyway. (laughs) But yes, you had five stitches. You are a warrior. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right. So back to uh, or on to. Stellenbosch. So not everyone saw our little teaser video, but you had a really interesting story about what happened to you while you were in Stellenbosch, South Africa's iconic wine region. Maybe so share. we were down there. We were down in South Africa. In South Africa. It's one of the few accents I can do properly. Diplomatic <laughs> immunity from Lethal Weapon 3. <laughs> so we're down in Stellenbosch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, um, what a what a wonderful kind of time and place. We 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 went up to Kruger. Uh, we didn't do um, we didn't do Cape Town too much, but we did Joburg, and um, we, we we were invited by Distel, who's the international company. Do they and make they, this one? K W. Uh, KW, I, oh, KW, they do KW, yes. Cathedral Cellar, I mean, yeah. It may have changed since then, but yeah, they, they, yeah. They're, KW is part of the, the big, giant corporations that control this industry that we love so much. Cooperative. Um, <laughs> we, we got out of the... What are, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, I'm just with? rearranging glasses, but I'm still listening. Go on. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> well, I'm interested in what you're doing. Oh. <laughs> it's like, screw me. <laughs> I don't, like, like, Squirrel, uh, so, yes, please keep going. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So um, we were invited. We got met at the airport. We're we're treated like you know diplomats, really. Wow. And it's 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 wonderful. Some countries not so much. Some countries more. This was definitely a more show. They had beers in a cooler in the car for us. It's like not really supposed to be drinking in the car. It's like <laughs> just shut up and drink it. You know? <laughs> as long as you're and not that, driving. I, that was an Irish. Yeah, you know, we weren't driving. No. Um, but well, we got to the, the winery and we got a very simple, quick tour. And then they said, let's have a grand lunch. And at lunch, they offered me the privilege, as is sort of per usual, you know, I get to pick the wine for the table. Hmm. The first couple of times that happened, I shit my pants. <laughs> I, I, I shat my pants. <laughs> because it's a very intimidating thing to do for 20 or 30 people. To pick the wine, yes. To pick the wine. What's going to be the one wine? And I'm kind of going, like, I don't even know what we're eating yet, guys. But Stellenbosch, it was all well and cool. And um, the guy that was working with us, he was he was a psalm, but he wasn't the psalm. He was working in a PR position. And he, he was like a surfer dude. And he's like, yo, man, wine is cool. And like, yeah, you know, we should go surfing later when we get a couple of bottles of wine in us. And like, he was hilarious. So I felt the casualty of it. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to pick the wine today. I'm going to let Mike, our audio guy, okay. pick the wine. Okay. And because Mike and Mike's from Newfoundland. Uh, we had somebody on the line from Newfoundland. Was it yes. Gwen? I don't know. Yes, or... we do. No, Gwen's from Ottawa. That's right. Nicole's Nicole. from Vancouver. Oh, but Nicole, okay. So so I was again. like I was like, rather than me picking it, I would like to take this time and moment because Mike was so excited. I'm gonna let Mike pick the wine. <laughs> and I gave Mike the library book of wines that they had at uh, Distill and KW down in Stellenbosch in South Africa. And I kind of threw it on him at the last minute. So I, it was like throwing somebody under the bus, if you understand. Sure. And. <laughs> <laughs> what did he pick? <laughs> you know, okay. So they gave us pens too, right? They at get, the they beginning us, of the trip. Pens at the beginning of the trip. As when soon you were as in we the car, yeah. It was like, hey, Kevin, here's a pen. It's like, wow, great. I'm really tired. I just flew to South Africa from Canada, and I get a pen. Great. So Mike gets to pick the wine, and Mike picks an Italian. An Italian wine at a dinner it, in it, South it, Africa. At a vineyard. Welcome. To- <laughs> Oh my God! I shouldn't have let Mike pick the wine. Why right. didn't let Mike pick the wine? So it goes off okay, and then and then um, I can't remember his name, but the, the the guy comes back and he goes, maybe I'll pick a couple of our wines as well. <laughs> yeah, just just a we, thought while you're here. <laughs> right, it's such an idiot move, right? But sometimes sometimes you're tired, sometimes you're jet lagged. 
best intentions, sometimes you just don't know. Yeah. Which is sure. which is the wonder and the enlightenment of everything that I've experienced. So when we finished lunch and we were going back to the van, I took Mike's pen away from him. Oh, I was like, what the, you took his what pen. The, what the bleep were you doing picking <laughs> Italian wine in South Africa? Like they had a two pages of their wine and you flipped by them and went to Italy. Like, you know, and Mike <laughs> felt bad, but I think he was too jet lagged to know. <laughs> and um <laughs> This feels like therapy, actually, for me. We should have, yeah, is Mike going. from Calgary on the line? <laughs> yeah, is, yeah, that's right. Mike from Calgary is on the line. Mike, dude, brother, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so the next day we went out and I made him pick again, and he picked proper, and I gave him this oh. pen. Oh, so it and had a happy ending. It had a happy returned. ending. returned. All right. The, that's, <laughs> there's a lot in that statement that you made. I, I get a bit of a dirty <sighs> mind today. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyway, moving right moving along. On. Yes. Now, Gwen says another tip for if you're sabering outside is to make sure someone is watching where the top lands so that it can be retrieved. Anyway, good yeah, tip. Well, no, no, because like I said, you, the, the souvenir, you always have to save it. Yeah, I've, I've yeah. done that too in the backyard and had to search for a bit so that someone didn't step yeah. on it later but, when they're... But more importantly, don't aim in the direction of anybody. I mean, it goes about 10 to 14 feet. Yeah, it does. It right? has quite it, a velocity. Yes. Yeah, it, it, because the bottle wants to go. And if you wait too long, as was my problem in um, in, in France at Pomery, yeah. the bottle, when the heart of the bottle warms up, yeah. um, if you have the cage off the top of the bottle, that's why the cage is there on, it, note to self, you cannot saber a... Um, a screw top bottle of red or white. You right. cannot say that doesn't the, really work, does it? It doesn't work so well. No. Um, but that's why the cage exists because right. it's holding the pressure yes. of the secondary fermentation yes. in the bottle. Exactly. Once you remove the cage, it's like taking a lock off a gun. You right. remember? That's a good, that is good analogy though. Like a lot of people yeah. warn you as you take the cage off, keep your. That's, own. that's why this exists. Sometimes okay. people have no clue why yeah. that yeah. is on that. Just take That's it holding this yeah. to that. Yeah, absolutely. Right? So when absolutely. this is removed, the pressure inside the bottle is going to go whether you like it or not. So yeah. it's best to do Eventually. it when the bottle is cold. When really cold. That's key. Bottle, yes. Yeah. Because if it's anything less than cold, the pressure is even more inside the bottle than city exactly. bus tires. That's what and you're dealing with, 90 pounds per square inch. If you see the episode of Thirsty Traveler, when I hit the Magnum, okay. it cracked there. Oh my goodness, wow. Right, well, I also hammered the crap out of it because <laughs> I was so stressed. I'd okay. never done it before. You wanted to make sure it worked. Yeah. yeah, I'm a very good teacher. I'm a very good well, teacher. Well, if you're Most willing to make students, mistakes, especially publicly. You learn from your you mistakes. You learn, and so does everybody else, and they are yeah. not as intimidated to do it because they know it's okay to make mistakes. Like with the names of varietals and stuff. Oh, like what happened there? Well, I was I was at an award show, yes. um, and in Portugal, okay. no, in Portugal, and I mispronounced a varietal on stage. A great thing. And, okay. And you know, okay, tomato, tomato. Yeah. Viognier, Viognier, Vigonier, <laughs> stuff like that. Gruner Vetliner, Gruner Vetliner. You know, it's it's okay. and. My um my co-host, who I didn't really know but was lovely, on stage just sort of called me out and right there she corrected you in front oh, of Oh yeah, and it felt like a piece of mm. Wow. Do you remember yeah. which grape it was? Or do you I, want to I even say it again? I, I Is it I, negative associations now? I, I can't I, even say I, it. Little, probably a little bit. Um <laughs> It, it, like, it wasn't like Tariga Nacional, or, or it, was, it wasn't like, it, it, it wasn't an obvious one, but I, had, I, I was familiar with it. And I don't know if it was the Canadian in me. Yes. Did you like apologize? When I'm Chef America. Well, I, I think after I was shunned for saying it incorrectly on stage, publicly on the microphone, I, I, I don't know what I did, but I, <laughs> but I do remember it and going like, you know, there are a lot of different ways to say a lot of different things. Absolutely. And someone and, could excuse that as dialect or something. Like, yeah, and it, and it wasn't treated as that, but it was embarrassing to me, and it taught me 
to understand more and and read more about wines and varietals and their pronounced and their character sure. so it was a again it was a learning lesson yeah. you know okay if you look at things like who gewurztraminer right right is that is that okay yes that's fine right gewurztraminer people don't order things on a menu that they can't pronounce that's true that's true gruner vetlinger yes another right? one yeah. And you that's why they're such good it. deals, because everybody is afraid to ask for them. I right. Think, and, you know? and, and in New York, they just call it GV. Ah, uh, yes. Like It's like Cab Sauve. That's or Cab Sauve. Cab Sauve. <laughs> Cab Sauve. <laughs> or Sauvignon Blanc. Anyway. Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah. But I that's don't a... know what those, G, those, uh, those, those Gs and the Ns are doing together. Sauvignon I know. You know what? They are a mouthful. And it's yeah. part of the intimidation of wine. But you're right. You, there should be a shorthand way of, of getting there's, around that. There's so much intimidation about wine, even still to this day. And I think one of the, the, the claims to my success has been for a, a decent guy, a very handsome man. <laughs> and modest. Don't forget modest. And a modest guy. <laughs> don't shortchange yourself. <laughs> to go around. <laughs> Hang on a second. I'm just watching the whole. <laughs> to go around the world. But to know enough, but to access, you know, the fact, the fruits of the labor is these people that make this stuff that we drink so much mm -hmm. are real people. They're everyday people. They're That's farmers. Yes. A lot of these guys are just, you know, they can dress up and they can wear a James Bond, Daniel Craig styled suit. But five days out of seven, they're wearing a T-shirt and jeans and Kodiaks. And they're in the fields and they're tending to what their heart and passion is. So we were always well received because we didn't come in on the high end. We came in on the low end. We like we kind of snuck through the back door. What do you mean um, by the low end? Do you mean the non fussy type or the I, I, I you know, to this day, I still don't really know. I mean, we, we, we weren't coming in and looking for the 90 point wines right. and we weren't coming sure. in looking for the scores and we weren't coming in looking for you know, I wanted to play in the vineyard. I wanted to learn. I picked grapes. You know, I sorted grapes. I got to drive the tractor. Yeah, your hands on. I got to drive the tractor. Excellent. I didn't even have a tractor license. Right. When did they uh, take that away from you? <laughs> that must be fun, actually. The, the police were not very happy. When, no. no. Um, but, you know, like, wine is playful. I, yes. I grew up, I was, in, in my history, I was beer first. Okay. Spirit second. Mm -hmm. um wine third is so, that because of the german family history that's what yeah, was on the, the table the, the, the german family uh, joe brosh you never say joe you never say mr brosh you just say joe brosh um he would always take me up to the cottage and he would work all day and i would have to entertain myself i'd play in the woods and i'd you know do stuff and carve sticks and make slingshots and he would have a, a carling red cap, which is, do you know those little stubby bottles? Yeah, vaguely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's little stubby bottles that used to have in Canada. Yes. Um, yeah. And he would, he would pour it into a glass at the end of his day. He would work for eight hours and he would like reward himself with a beer before dinner. Yeah. And he'd have a couple more after dinner. And, but he would always give me the first sip of his beer and it had this thick, creamy, foamy head on it, hmm. right? And... I was like, I want to be a man. So I would always accept the offering and I'd take some of the sip and I'd, I'd ah, so bitter. Probably it was bitter. bitter. It's yeah. very, it was very bitter. It was an ale. Yeah. It was an ale, especially for a young palate. You're so yeah. correct, Natalie. And, um, but I kept doing it out of principle that I wanted to be treated like a man, not a boy. And I learned about beer that way. And then, you know, the, the next stage of your life, you steal from your parents' liquor cabinet <laughs> or, a, or a friend's parents' liquor cabinet. That's the next stage, yes. Right. Naturally. And then when you get to the age where you start dating women, th see, this is my theory, right? And you can argue this, but it's, it's factually true. And you know it. You Gwen in Ottawa <laughs> and Nicole in Vancouver, if you're still there or if you're oh, back. Oh, they are. They're still there. <laughs> um. What happens is when you start dating women, you want to get a bit more like fancy, sophisticated. Oh, oh suave, suave. Oh, so suave. You, you save up money to go on a date 
going out to dinner and and they say we have two wines we have a white and a red <laughs> and they were both or imported. They, they were both from boxes <laughs> <laughs> excellent that's how old i am that's a, i'm such a dinosaur wine only came in two styles white box red box wow um but wine was the wine was really the third charm um but okay. i i would say that wine was probably the thing that imparted the most on my heart why is um, that uh beer beer seems industrial okay. and because and, it's more and, uniform yeah and 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 spirits is very industrial even more so than beer okay. um and what i was allowed to see what i was privileged to see as i was doing thirsty traveler um going to mendoza going to chile mm -hmm. going to kunawara um going to Australia several times, going to New Zealand. Mm -hmm. um, there's, a, there's, there's such a love affair. It feels like it's more hands-on. Yeah. It, 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 I don't, it, it, it may or may not be less intrusive or more intrusive, but intrusive? the story- Intrusive? You mean the- me Mechanical, industrial- Oh, I see, the interventions, um, yes. Yeah, the intervention. Of that in the I, I, I I actually never thought of that word like that. Thank you, Natalie. Um, yeah, it, it 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 rocked my world. It really did. Like I wouldn't just go there and do a show. You know, some of us. You know, I know Tony Bourdain and I know yes. Ian Wright. And oh, stop on Tony Bourdain. Okay. Yeah. You. Oh, you have a heart. You have a crush on Tony Bourdain. Yes. Yes. Of course, most of us do Kitchen Confidential and a whole bunch of shows since. Love that. And Love I, that. <laughs> I know he's a bad boy. Made Not good. anymore. No, now they. No, now kitchen. he's all settled down. And yeah, I know he switches leather jacket to corduroy. Oh, Tony. Anyway, let's remember <laughs> Tony for what he was. Uh, yeah. But did you did you uh, have to share wine with him or something? I have an experience. Yeah, I did heroin with him in the back alley at his restaurant. <laughs> okay. If you read Kitchen Confidential, no, I didn't. Do <laughs> okay. Okay. That was you. <laughs> that was me. I'm in his book. No. Um, yeah, I was. Uh, he was doing a. He was. He was launching a, his third or fourth book. Okay. And we had just done an event in Singapore uh, for uh, the Red Cross uh, Hurricane Relief Society um, after the tsunami. All right. So we're, I guess we're going back to 2006 or seven. Okay. What was the tsunami? escapes it, it blurred yeah, around it, it, that. somewhere in there yeah. so a i got out of the airport and there was this huge huge billboard on the top of the convention center and it had nigella lawson tony bourdain ian wright jamie oliver <laughs> and then just on the side of the poster <laughs> it's like it was like <laughs> I can't tell if it was two thirds or three quarters of my face. Did they but squish I was you there. In? Oh, really? It was like a thirsty traveler, but it didn't say my name. Everybody else was like, "Boom, Jimmy Oliver, boom." <laughs> it was Tony like you're day. trying to photobomb them. Jimmy right? Boom, Nigel Lawson. <laughs> boom, that guy. <laughs> and it was like, <laughs> I'm on a big poster. Wow. And then, and then it was like the next day. I was like. Like, why is my face not fully on the poster? Like, I don't get it. We didn't have um, enough room. Oh. We had a great time. We raised a lot of good money. That's great. Um, and then when he was in Toronto at his book launch. Okay. Um, and we were at the Drake Hotel in Toronto, a fabulous boutique hotel. Mm. And um, super cool, super hip. Everybody's like, oh, all the chefs. It's a Monday night. So all the chefs from all the restaurants. Industry night. Yeah. The industry night. You got it. Points. Oh. Right there. Yeah, okay, I'm a little slow on that. I got to okay, practice no, no, that. We got to we got to practice that. You got okay. points. You got points. <laughs> so I'm there. I'm standing there with um, David Rocco and yes. Laura Calder. David Rocco is big a chefs. Chef. Yep. Yep. And Laura Calder is a French chef that lives in Canada. Yep. Um, French yep. cooking. Country yep. Cooking. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. And um, I got eyes on on Tony. And he's not wearing a leather jacket. He's wearing corduroy now. And he's taking his earrings out because he had his baby girl. And I'm like, his glass of Guinness is empty. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, when I'm looking that way, I know you don't like that. Because everybody, her points are really solid when you do a, like a warm-up with her. But I'm like looking at Tony right now, right? Okay. I'm going like, 
Tony's glass is empty. Who's who's got eyes on Tony? Like, who's got eyes on Tony? Because Guinness is empty. He's gonna think Toronto sucks because nobody's getting him a new Guinness. So I sort of go over and he goes, hey. and I go, Tony Bourdain, hey, Kevin Bros, man, we worked in Singapore. And he goes, Kevin, I know you. And I was like, oh my God. Mm, yeah. It was like so cool to reacquaint. And the fact that the, so the guy like that to be remembered, you know, yeah. was a was a plus to the work that I do, yes. you know. And I got him a Guinness faster than anyone else in the house. I hear he so, still talks about that. He doesn't talk about that. No, I've heard. <laughs> so what was he like in person? Tony. Uh, he's, he's very gracious. I mean, he, I think he fought himself for, he's fought himself for so many years. If you read his book, you know, um, or you read his books, Kitchen Confidential, he starts by saying that um, your, your sous chef is, you know, the second closest person to you in your life other sure. than your wife. And then he switches it. And he says, actually, no. The sous chef is the most important person. And for a chef, I kind of understand that because it shows you, you know, the, the kitchen is your second family. When you, you have a successful restaurant or a successful winery, you have to intertwine your personal life and your, your public life so critically or it won't work. One of them will fail. Typically, what fails is your private life, your pub, you know, your family life. Mm -hmm. You know, marriages can't exist if one person is not there supporting the cause. Or it's so intertwined in a positive, correct way, you find a way to make it work. You know, the kids grow up and they're not doing roll-ups in the back of the kitchen, but they grow up under the tutelage of a kitchen and a family. That's why the best chefs treat their employees as family. That's why there's family meals before yes. service. Yes. You, you know, you're not ordering in tuna sandwiches. You're not getting pizza from right. next door. You're cooking. You're teaching these right. people to, to continually explore their food. You're teaching them about wines. I, I was at Splendido for a while mm -hmm. in um, Toronto, in Toronto yeah. which is gone. And now it's Piano Piano, Victor Berry's great place. Okay. And, you know, I, I got to do a couple of um, talks there. And, you know, they always did a pre-service talk and they talked about the specials mm -hmm. and they reminded people of, you know, which of their major um, guests was coming in. Like, you know, you're going to have yeah. Mr. and Mrs. Her, they're celebrating their 20th anniversary. It's in the book, you know, look it up. So be very attentive to them because we appreciate their service. And they would always do a, a wine. They would be, we got a new wine, you know, and it's mm -hmm. this one and they go through it and, the best places allow you to um, discover the flavors and the tastes and what you think the wine is on its own. You don't want to hear it necessarily top down. Sure. This wine has tannins. This is oak aged. It's, it's like, taste the wine. Yeah. And then you can genuinely speak from experience. Absolutely. And, and it, it, but it gives you bravery around wine. There, yes. There's a lack of bravery around wine for work people that don't know about wine. Right. And, you know, I, I just remember in the room, it was like, who, what does, what does it taste like? And people are afraid to say cotton candy. Right. But we know that that's a, there's a wine, that's one of the, the culinary descriptors, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Or, 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 or candy in and of itself, mm -hmm. you know, earth, you know, wet leaves. We know all of these things and people are afraid to save them for the first time. Yeah. And yet once you do, you're so empowered, mm -hmm. you know, the wine tastes like the wine tastes to you, like the wine tastes to you. Sure. I can read the label. I can read what Robert Parker thinks of this wine. Mm -hmm. I can read what Billy Munley, who I adore and love, Charlie Billy Munley, yeah. call me. <laughs> Call me, Billy. I like you. He's a um, great guy. You know, thinks of this wine. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I'm only left with me. Sure. Your palate. It, 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 it's daunting. And it's, yeah. and it's really, like, nobody says that with beer. Like, guys don't drink beer and, and go, <laughs> I get a little bit of uh, the, the hops from the <laughs> seashore by Seattle. And uh, <laughs> I get a nose of dog hair 
and you know like like no. we don't treat other liquids libations even when it comes to craft beer i find i'm not hearing as much of that kind of discussion even with craft beer i know what craft beer is more artisanal and i'm i'm not in beer at all i just haven't got there but do you, do you drink beer do you drink no, beer no all Ever? my relatives do i'm scottish so it was Nothing. all beer and whiskey yeah. So, and, uh, so what? But I just didn't so what, do it. what? What pushed you to wine from beer and whiskey? Because that well, was your that was the road that you were on, and then yet you forked, you strayed. I pivoted. Um, but when I was young, growing up, I didn't drink at all. Uh, I'm making up for it now. But um, I was Scottish from Nova Scotia, and my relatives, as I said, it was beer and whiskey. But I found whiskey too alcoholic, and beer I just did not like the taste of. I've been since tested, and I'm so-called super taster, though that's a misnomer. But I think oh, did the, you do that taste? Yeah, and I think it, I just found beer too bitter, right? Did Did you know? Do you know Jamie Drummond? Yes, in Toronto. Yes. In Toronto. Yes. The Scottish guy. Yes. Crazy hair. Crazy orange hair. I mean, crazy oh, orange hair. Amber. One of the best guys. I've yeah, gotten into way too much trouble over the years with him. Um, he did that super taster test with me. Yes. I'm not. You're not. Was he? But, you're not. He, apparently he, well, he said he was. We did, I didn't, I actually should have gotten him to do it in front of me. I'm not a super taster. Well, I'm yeah, a super drinker. Right, which, you know, makes up for a lot, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> but that's why I never got on to, and I actually didn't even start drinking wine till I finished university and had some money and. That was yeah. like me. When I, when I moved into that next step of my life, when I started you know, dating women and being able to take people out for dinner. Yes. Um, that was where, you know, women wouldn't really drink like boozy drinks and they no. wouldn't get pints of beer. Mm -hmm. So wine became a new thing to me. That was really when my first, my dad was German. He drank Black Tower. Yes. You know, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, very kind of uh, uh, cultural beers to the culture we drink our own culture right absolutely it's and really german funny. and scottish that's the northern hemisphere yeah where it's so, more so you, beer, were, you were beer you had scotch you had yeah. scotch yeah, yeah exactly name me name me a scottish wine natalie i don't know but you know as There's a highland not. dancer i went for try to be a like a johnny walker spokesperson that didn't work out so anyway, no? no 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 anyway another road uh, another okay path not taken but danielle oak says she's in guelph um, thank goodness there are no Dutch wines. She was referring back to all our pronunciations. Um, oh, she, she finds that some wines taste like dog toys. Now there's an interesting comment and how you know that Danielle, um, that's interesting. Um, and Paul says, oh yes, we do that with craft beer. Patty and I go to beer tastings at breweries in the outer. Adirondacks? Adirondacks? In the Adirondacks, yeah. No, that's kind of Western oh, New no, York. Oh, no, he's saying he's amb ambidrinctus. I'm, I'm reading it as Adirondacks. He's saying okay. he's ambidrinctus. He's ambidextrous. Drinkus. Ambidrinctus. He drinks okay, both. Okay, so ask him. Oh, he drinks both. <laughs> yes. So, and Gwen's saying Scottish wine equals bagpipes. W-H-I-N-E. Anyway. So, wine. yes, everybody's getting bolder <laughs> with their comments now. We've got to give them points. We've got to give them points. Okay, okay. Points, 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 Cheers, points, points, points. <laughs> so let me, oh my goodness, seven o'clock. We can't overstep Game of Thrones, Kevin. Uh, you and I, everybody loves it. But I still, I can't believe how fast this has gone. But I'm still going to ask you some of those lightning round questions. Lightning round. Oh, lightning oh. round. So quick okay. answers. Okay. Um, Let's see, uh, what's the one thing that most people don't know about you and would surprise them? I think we touched on that actually. Okay, we did. Yeah. We did. Okay. okay, well, let's just keep going. What's serial the most... killer. Yes, you're not a serial killer. And beekeeper, and beekeeper. And you're a beekeeper in your spare time. Wow. <laughs> so you like the buzz generally. Da -da -da. Yes. Boom. Okay, so point. what's... Uh, <laughs> Stop me. What's the most useful wine gadget you've come across? You had some interesting thoughts on this when I was corresponding um, with you in email. Well, I mean, this is the best. The waiter's corkscrew. The, the traditional waiter's corkscrew. waiter's corkscrew. Why is it so great? Get rid of the rat. Well, I mean, it's just got, it's like a Swiss army knife. It is. You know, yes, it's I got mean, all the functionality. I, I, it can hang on your shirt. It can hang. Like, sometimes when I'm feeling a bit like, um, 
I have I have a bit of like uh, self low self esteem issues, honestly. Yeah. Um, but you, you know, put you it wear, on there. I, I would wear it in my pocket, and people would just go, "Hey, man, that's cool. You're wearing it in your pocket." Yeah, you know, like a better than a pocket protector. Exactly. Exactly. Ultra nerdy, but um, smart. I've I've had to untie knots on my shoes with this, oh, yeah. which is the curly cool end. Yeah. It, it's the most efficient way. You, to, you know, good ones like most. There's a lot of companies that spend a lot of money on these things made in China, yes. and they they don't seem to work properly. Okay. Get yourself a good one. I have a Le Creuset, Le and Creuset. it was like forty bucks. Yeah. It works like a dream. Why you know? is it better than the cheap ones in China? Is it just the materials? I think it's. I think it's the mechanisms and it's just the tightness of everything. You know, okay. like they're just. It's better made. Yeah. Um, it, it doesn't have the best handle. I will admit the Le Creuset okay. Okay. that I have. It's a smaller handle, yeah. but it's so tight that I don't have to worry that when I like flip out like this and go like yeah. this, boom, it performs, Excellent. and I can cut properly it goes back i'm out i know it like all of the functionality of it works so well you don't need a rabbit like you don't need a no, big, hey, I'm big open contraptions. A yeah. not that there's anything wrong with that because i opened up a bottle of wine yesterday with a rabbit and it right. was great yeah. and i think most people know what the rabbit is right yeah is it uh, it's hard i to without visualizing it but yeah it has the more easier pull yeah. but that's a like a gunslinger it feels corkscrew. like a lot of work feels like the terminator of wine openers where <laughs> if you just find a good one yeah like this and you and you have to learn you know it's like five and a half cranks they say oh you yeah know, i don't even remember anymore do yes. do 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 yes. do half boom up down boom out and it's but you just have to practice absolutely practice and you were saying perfect. you use it to tighten sunglasses i've i've used i've used the tip of this often to tighten which tip which side Oh, that to, right tight, oh, to tighten a little screw on yeah, your sunglasses. When the uh, when the arm bands get yeah. a bit kind of loose, <laughs> I wish I had them. I'd show you. Yeah, you demo it. Yeah, sure. But I could go run, but I don't no, think no, we have that's time. Okay. That's all right. Um, but it's just, it's a very versatile tool. It, it is really like a Swiss Army knife. Yeah, it's great. You know, I like you, that. It's so cool. Yeah. Carry it around. That's yeah. awesome. No, I think I think every it saves you in a in a fight in a you in know a in fight. a car fight. Right. Like, in a dark that's parking it. lot. That's what you're you going to come at me. You're going to come at me. Yeah. You're going to come at me. Yeah. You're <laughs> okay, going to come at me. <laughs> Very nicely acted out there. Okay. <laughs> so, yes. What advice would you give to your 30 year old self, Kevin? Um, get more sleep. Get more sleep. Okay. Uh, maybe don't. Don't drink so much. Drink better. Drink better. Be more. I started selective. learning that in university. We, we made a we made a vow to spend twenty five cents more on every bottle of beer we drank at the Ryerson Pub okay. in, in Ryerson University in, um, Toronto, in yeah. Toronto. I went to a radio and television school, and we said, "What if we like?" Because we were just getting the worst hangovers drinking the cheapest beer, and we said, "Let's like move up," and we moved up from. Labatt blue. I nothing wrong with Labatt. It's not a Labatt thing, right? Sure. Um, but we moved to Upper Canada, yeah, which was one of the first craft beers ever. And they, yeah. their family went on to produce Steam Whistle. Um, but we said if we spent like ten or fifteen cents or twenty five cents more per beer, mm -hmm. we'll drink less, but we'll drink better. Will look better. People will think, like, "Hey, ladies, look at what we're, we're drinking." And it, there's so many fundamental reasons, but we're also doing something good for ourselves. You know, the yeah. whole reason that craft beer has craft beer has benefited from um, organics and hundred mile diets and seasonal eating. Right. The more we think about the things we put in our body, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. The more we benefit sure. from that. And we, we, we went, okay, think about all the steps, right? Organic, 100 mile diet, um, seasonal, yeah. local, mm -hmm. craft farmers. Then we start looking towards wine. What happens? Wow, now we have an organic section at the LCBO in Ontario. Now we have, you know, gluten free, you know, like we're, we're, we're continually exploring what do we do three to eight times a day? We eat. Yes. It's a necessity. Right? You know what's more popular? Hmm? 
the Golf Channel. The <laughs> Golf Channel is still more popular than the Food Network. Oh. It is. It actually is. I wonder why that is. You would think people would want to watch food shows more. Well, we, we do, but I don't think we're making the right food shows anymore. I don't uh, think we're making the right food shows anymore. What food shows should we be making? And even more so, what wine shows should we be making? Or should we? Well, we should be making shows like Thirsty Traveler, right. whether it's with or without me. Shows that really explore the passion behind the guys that spend their life you know, you know how many days we, we were going to talk about Bacco Noir, and I don't think yes, we're going to. Yes, I've got a Bacco, by the way. I, I brought up Henry of Pelham. Boom. My boys! They're the best, aren't I they? I love them. Yeah, they're great. That was one of my first epiphany wines, okay? okay. Yeah. My second one would, would be the Grange, which is a wild uh, Yes, thing. up in Picton, Prince Edward County. No, 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 the Grange, the Grange. from. Oh, Penfolds, right, Penfolds. Australia. Penfolds. Okay. But but that's a pretty that's a pretty big wild swing from Baco that's, Noir. Yes, that is eleven dollars and ninety five cents to eight hundred and ninety five dollars. Oh, yeah. Depending on how mature it is, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Ninety eight. Oh. Um what a great barbecue one. What a great summertime oh, yeah. one. This is fantastic. This burnt Marco. char. Um so I didn't good. have time to get there today and get some. But what what a lovely wine and it is. Um, especially for the money. This one that this is their entry level and it's only fourteen bucks I think. And they've got this old vines in the regular list that's nineteen no, and it's amazing. I, I I will I like I like the earlier version better. I'll be okay, honest with you. Okay. And I've said that to them, hmm, right? I owe them days in the in the in the vineyard. If you ever really want to get to know more about wine, here's mm -hmm. a tip. Find a winery that's close to you that you like mm -hmm. and offer them your service yes. come the fall. Yes. They'll There's feed you. Like they'll give you yeah. great wines. They'll let you taste their selections. You know, it's a hard day's work. It's great exercise. It's so much fun. Yes. You get to pick grapes and you get to be involved in the process. They will show you the process. They will learn you the process, you know, and they will treat you, they won't pay you, but they will treat you like family. And that's, again, what this whole industry really is all about. That's what I've pulled out from it time and time and time again. Yeah. It's, and I owe, I owe the Speck brothers who run Henry of Pell yes. and the Back of Noir that we just pulled up there. Yes. Um, I owe them so many days in the fields. That's There's so much good work that we've done together. And I'm like, yeah. I'm coming up there this next month. I'm there. And there's like, Sorry. oh man, I got to go to China. <laughs> <laughs> but like, there, is Sorry, nothing, man. there is nothing like getting hands on to get the full experience and to to have those serendipitous moments when they when they reveal of what their life is really like. Well, we yeah. haven't talked about terroir, which is such an important philosophy for me as well. It's like, you know, you see the, the roughness of the earth and the dirt that yeah. the vines suffer through and yeah. survive through yeah. to produce something so majestic as the stuff that we drink, you know, and in like Kunawara in Australia, like there's this stretch of land one mile long, sorry, seven miles long by one mile wide. And, and they call it the cigar. And it is this piece of dirt clay. And, and that's Kunawara. Right. It's one by seven. I didn't know that. It's very. Oh, and one of the wineries, it, it, it's, it's extremely defined. Um, and one of the wineries has cut a, a chunk out. I think they had some rot or they had some problem, but they turned it into their advantage. Again, working with little to make it better is like a common theme in life, right? Sure, sure, yeah. And, and what, a, what a noble, kind of beautiful, poetic segue into wine, right? Because that's what wine is, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, um, not Zolt, John Zabo. Yes. Is a, is a sommelier, one of Canada's top sommeliers. And he had a menu at a restaurant in Toronto at 99 Sudbury Street. I, I can't remember the name of the restaurant. And he poetically staggered his wines. Um, you're bringing back so many memories for me. It's almost, Excellent. I'm almost getting like blown out. Like I want to talk to you, <laughs> but I'm not looking away on, per I'm looking You're away thinking. because of the memories I'm thinking. Yeah. Um, uh, Stones to Tears. That was, was the name of the wine? 
That would no, that was one of the names of his collections of wines. Oh, okay. Like some of the hardest wines grown in the right. hardest terroir okay, gotcha. that he's ever Wait, seen. He's grouped it. Yes. So he had a Greek wine and, and he had a really strong rough wine from the Rhone Valley. And it was like from tears from stones to tears. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was like A, he's a pretty special guy. Like he's a pretty majestical guy. But he he gets wine like nobody else. Like, yeah, that's know. a nice way, a poetic way to put it. Absolutely, the yeah. groupings. But it also just ties right back to what you're saying about the stories and the people and the soil and everything else about it. So, yeah. it's oh not just gosh. about the label. It's not. It's no, not about the absolutely. label. Absolutely. You know? And and then again, it's, it's like if you find a wine that you like, like it. You know, and, and I don't want to have to say defend it, but you know, like what you like. And Absolutely, be it. free and be confident yeah. of it. Oh, Kevin, we've talked about so much and um, I can't believe this is the longest it's ever gone. You you tell such great stories. I, I hate to wrap it up, but is there anything we haven't covered that you'd like to cover or mention before we wrap it up? No, I just think it's like, be proud of what you like. Sure. And, you know, uh, in your choice. I, I get asked so often, you know, I, I get asked, what's the best place to go? Right. It's like, the it's wine the wine. place that you want to go. Sure, so, where you're like curious. I've been, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm getting into the business now of running some trips. So oh, if you? you if you connect with me on social media, this yeah. is a plug. Yes, this please is do. A plug. This is a plug. Um, I will be running some trips uh, yeah. in, the next, in the next calendar year. That's awesome. And we'll do German river cruises and we'll go to the Rhine and, yeah. and um, We'll cover beer and wine. Perfect. Um, and you are so well those. suited to do that, Kevin. I'm going to post the links and everything else in well, our I'll discussion. Invite, I'll invite you as if you get me on this show one more time. I'll be, <laughs> how, how, who's been on the show most? Everybody's been on one so far. We've been doing this a year. I think maybe Ann Sperling from Southbrook is the only one that's been on twice. Ann Sperling. Well, it's because she, yeah, I know, Ann <laughs> but, but it's because she does biodynamic and orange wine. She's so trendy. There you go. She's very there you trendy. Go. But you could be maybe trendy I'll too. I'll you guys on my, on my river cruise. But there um, are, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just want people to like what they like. And, Absolutely. You know, because I don't really come in with a lot of, um, like stops. Sure. And, and, and I, I, yep. yeah, I, I, I came in scared. Like when I was dating women and women knew more about wine and I was like, Oh my God, this date's not going so well. Maybe <laughs> that thing that I want to happen at the end of the night is not going to happen. And, and you know, but you know, wine is a great, the Vikings and the Saxons sat down with each other at the end of the day, like the war. No, they really did, okay, right? Okay, okay, yes. They would, they would invite each other and they would go, surrender. Surrender us your women and then we'll call off the war and we won't have to have any more blood, loss, and tragedy. And they would invite them into their house and the whole story of the toast, right? Yes. I'll, in a toast, and I'm gonna spill. Splash and, and splash to see that you're not poisoning me. Boom, points, points, right there, Yes. right? We just did that, right? Because you wanted to trust in them, right? right. It, but it was, it was hard living then. Yeah. And and now it's just like we're fortunate enough to have all this great stuff at our avails. And I just want people to have fun and be nice people because we're going through some crazy times right now. Absolutely. And I, I'm not judging you by what you have in your glass. I'm I don't want to judge you as you are as a person. I just want us to have a good time as long as we can, right? If our politics are different, so be it. If our religion is different, so be it. If the wine in our glass is different, so be it. You know, but way to wrap it up, Kevin. <laughs> you no. know what? I think I think people would have a blast on your tours. Yeah. Seriously, I'm going to add this not only here on Facebook, but also on the blog post that I created back on the site, so that for sure that they can get in touch with you, Kevin. And um, lots of people Thank are you. here with us live, absolutely. Uh, but also, lots of people will watch the replay who weren't able to be here live. So. Um, please post your comments here. I'm going to ask Kevin to follow up and, and respond to some of the questions we did not get to tonight, but we're, the conversation continues. <laughs> there you go. See, <laughs> there's his little 
uh, Chardonnay. Uh, anyway, oh, oh, I know. I love you. Oh, I love you. I know. I, I, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I should stop before I, uh, I run off with the puns. But Kevin, thank you so much for being here thank tonight. You. I raise my glass. Where is it? And I raise my glass to everybody that offered their time. Oh, absolutely. To, and to they're still in. here and they're still going. They, you know what? Uh, you can't see all these comments, Kevin, but they're saying so much fun tonight. Really enjoyed it. You guys are great. Thank you. Well, have that. me back anytime. And I will. I will. And I, I encourage everybody to take you up on your tours and follow you. You have a YouTube channel. I'm going to post all the links, Kevin, so people can Thank find you. you for sure. Yeah. No, they're, they're going to be a lot of fun. I did a tour through Germany last year and it, uh. and it broke my brain. <laughs> and I was like, I have to do more of these and I have to bring people along. You'd and be this, ideal. This, this conversation is what we do every day for seven Wouldn't days. That be and, fun? Wouldn't that be and fun? And we drink a lot. So, you know, get ready oh. for it. Sue Ann Staff. Woo. From Niagara. What? No she, way. She just joined. No Hello, way. Okay, no. Yeah. You Sue never Ann. know, but you never know who's watching. <laughs> I love Sue Ann Staff Wines. Yeah. Get her wines. If Sue Ann Staff is really watching, I love, right Lou, love by Lou. The sun is starting to come in at me. Anyway, Kevin. Yeah. Thank you so much. You are so great. Thank all the you, stories, Natalie. all the liveliness from sabering to all the stories. Right there, people. Wish you the best, Kevin. We will Thank stay you. in touch. You'll be back. You'll be back. I, I will be back, whether you like it or not. Thank <laughs> you very much. I'm sure of that. Have a great Sunday night. Okay, take care, Kevin. I'm going to send this to you, okay? I will we'll wait for you. In the you mail. get that one. You get that one. Okay. From me to you. Excellent. Thank okay. you. Take care. Bye. Bye bye. You say Volt. Okay, Volt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, folks, I'm just going to stay here a little bit longer. Um, we are wrapping up. Ooh, okay. And Sue Ann just joined us. You know, we get this all the time. People just find us at the very end, but that's okay. You can watch the replay as soon as I wrap this up, finally. Um, anyone can watch the whole thing from the beginning. Gosh, that was fun. He is so lively. And um, that you know he has so many stories i had so many more questions to ask him that we did not even get to so i should probably have him on again um but i will post all of the links let me see if i can find that stuff now if anyone has anything else they want to ask whether it's about what we were talking about tonight or anything else let me um let you know about next week it's norm hardy from picton cult producer that's a favorite of a lot of people but, uh, you know, Sue Ann, you should be on this show. Um, let's see, there's Norm Hardy. Then there's Caroline LeBlanc from Torres, August 22nd. The 3rd and the 10th, I'm still booking. The 17th is Laura Catena from um, Argentina. She's an emergency room doctor. Oh. Uh, we've got so many people coming up. So um, I am going to see if I can find this before I close this off, but guys, this was fun. It was fun. Here we are again. Uh, <laughs> I'm so glad you like that, Anne. Oh my gosh, isn't he so lively? He's barely contain containable. I'm on to Laura Catena. He's barely containable, but I just love the stories. He brings wine to life and, uh, and so much more. So I think I'm going to wrap it up. Guys, um, once again, thank you for making time in your weekly calendar. If you... Um, want to join us every week, the best way to know how is to click on the follow and like buttons. Maybe they're up there. Not quite sure. Also, um, put us in your calendar. I have a Google calendar, got into using it in the last year or so. And you could put a repeating event. So every Sunday at six, and then you'll know what will be in your calendar. And of course, if you miss us, or if that time just doesn't work for you, you can always watch the video replay. I post it over on the site. Of course, you can watch it here on Facebook. YouTube, Twitter, but there you go. So I hope I'll see you next Sunday at 6 p.m. Toronto, New York time, when we will have Norm Hardy from Prince Edward County, icon, cult figure, all around good guy who's worked at the Four Seasons as a sommelier for six years, then went around the world doing stages and then brings back all that expertise and excellence to the county in Northern Ontario. So guys, good night. And I hope something is good in your glass. I'm off soon to watch Game of Thrones. Take care.